White House is pleased with the first positive GDP report this year. Republicans are dismissing the numbers less than two weeks ahead of Election Day. In a statement, the president said it was, quote, a testament to the resilience of the American people. He went on to say today's data shows that in the third quarter, Americans' incomes were up and price increases in the economy came down. Well, to help figure out what all of this means and the truth behind some of the talking points, <laughs> CBS senior White House correspondent Ed O'Keefe live here in the studio. Good Ed, to see always you. Great, great to have see you. you in studio. Ed. Yeah. So the U.S. economy grew in the third quarter. Tell us how this affects the political narrative in these last few days of the of the campaign. Well, they're breathing a sigh of relief that there was positive growth <laughs> because, as your last guest just pointed out, you get more than two quarters of negative growth and you're heading into recession, which is where many people still think we may be headed. And where the president argues Republicans are, are, are cheering the economy is headed towards. And they're touting the fact that these numbers show growth, although not as high as analysts may have predicted. They wanted to see north of 3 percent. But unemployment's at a low or a 50 year low. Uh, historic uh, levels of employment across the country. Uh, prices are coming down. Gas prices, which is a daily obsession at the White House, remain on average at about 339 a gallon. So still high, but coming down again. And, and they would argue, as they have to, yeah. with less than two weeks to go, that things are in good shape, that there's reason to keep Democrats in charge. Speaking of that timeline, Ed, we know that the president is set to deliver some remarks at Syracuse, New York, later today. What can we expect him to say, and how will that fit into the strategy for midterms? So this is, again, another outgrowth of the sort of ribbon-cutting strategy that they've had over the last several months, where the president shows up to an event that a state or a local uh, the city is holding to tout some kind of economic development project that in essence was sparked or is being paid for in part by what the federal government has done over the last two years thanks to Democrats in charge. So this time it's Micron announcing about $100 billion in investment, going to build a huge manufacturing facility there in central New York, an area that state, an area of the country that needs to see that kind of manufacturing Absolutely. rebound. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that the president of the United States, less than two weeks out, is going to central New York at all is a sign that there are still troubles for Democrats in what we think of as a blue state, yeah. right? Now, look, in midterm years, central New York is usually a place where you have uh, some pretty hard fights over House districts. They've drawn one now in a way that Democrats hope they can win it back from the retiring Republican Congressman John Katko, who's going to be the only Republican in attendance at this event today. But the governor's going to be there. She's in a tighter-than-expected battle with her Republican opponent. Senator Schumer, who's also on the ballot this fall, is going to be there. And after going to Oregon and parts of California in recent weeks, yeah. New York and New Jersey, then this part of New York uh, in, in, in recent weeks as well, it's a sign that a presidential visit is designed to boost the Democratic chances and turnout. And yet he's not going to places yeah. like Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, where you'd think he might be helpful, but really is a drag yeah. on Democrats. Well, you know, New York is one of those states, though. It's it's mixed, right? It's blue in the in the urban areas, right. but it's red where it gets rural. So, yeah. you but, know. but, you know, another state that he is visiting is going to be Pennsylvania. And yep. he's going to be going there with Vice President Harris on Friday. Yeah. They're campaigning, obviously, in favor of the Democratic nominee for the Senate, John Fetterman. Uh, his debate performance yesterday, we were discussing... He made a lot of money during that time period, but the reviews have not been overall overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Is there talk within the Democratic Party, given how important that Senate race is, that seat is, uh, that, that they should have backed somebody else? Look, Democrats are good at clutching their pearls no matter what. <laughs> They're just clutching them maybe a little harder after that debate. because I, I, But I think it's a lot of people outside the state looking in who maybe didn't realize that Fetterman hasn't always been a strong public speaker to begin with. Mm -hmm. You talk to our colleague John Delano, for example, at KDK, who's covered yeah. him for 20 years, and he says he's not a good public speaker yeah. even before the stroke, and he's how, had issues since, obviously. Right. But, but How that, forthright he was in that interview, yeah, saying yeah. how difficult it was for yeah. him. Yeah, so, you know, look, this event with the vice president and the president was scheduled before the debate. Regardless, they want to be there. Mm -hmm. The White House, the Democratic Party, convinced that holding Pennsylvania or picking up the Senate seat in Pennsylvania is key to holding Senate control. Yeah. But it's also beginning to lay the groundwork, remember, for 2024. Mm -hmm. You have right. seen the Democratic National Committee and the White House pay far more attention to Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, North Carolina to some extent, because they know that in two years, that's typically, and yeah. where it's expected, right. The White House but, battle will be fought as well. And in terms of the Democrats bringing out the big guns, though, I think it's interesting that we haven't seen President Biden campaigning as much as he might have, because I think he's a controversial figure for some candidates, right? But now we're seeing 
former President Barack Obama yep. hitting the campaign trail. Uh, is, is that considered more of a sure bet? Uh, it is for some Democrats mm -hmm. in the states where the former president's going. Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, mm -hmm. Nevada, Pennsylvania, I believe at some point. His, uh, the First Lady is also getting engaged, to some, former First Lady to some extent. Um, yeah, look. The same dynamic existed when Barack Obama was president and right. Bill Clinton was out campaigning <laughs> right. for it's Democrats. It's some distance from the White House that seems Makes to them serve. a little more yeah, popular, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, and the it's Obama perhaps... administration lost a lot of those seats in the midterms as well. Right. So, right. so yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. what is it? Distance from when they makes were in the office makes the heart grow farther. So Obama can be out there doing <laughs> That's right. this. And, That's right. And we'll see to what extent he's helpful. But the other thing to stay tuned for, the president's in Florida next week. Right. White House tells us there will be far more stops on his schedule as well may give us an indication of where they think, beyond these blue states and Pennsylvania, where he might be helpful. Where he can be another helpful. former president right. going to be there Definitely. in Florida as well. Interesting. All yeah. right. Well, Ed O'Keefe, as always, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your insight. Good to see you.